The following is a production of FSM, where Northwest fans come first. Pac-10 play starts today on FSN with the two teams who surprised everyone with their play last year. The Dogs were the king of the pack, winning their first outright conference title since 1953. Their pressure defense and teamwork had the rest of the Pac-10 bowing down to Washington. Down in Corvallis, Craig Robinson and his team resurrected Beaver basketball. Their 1-3-1 zone and backdoor cuts led Beaver Nation back to the postseason. Now comes each team's chance for an encore, but this year they face higher expectations. The early season saw both teams slip, but now it's time to start over as conference play begins. Who will take the first step towards the top of the pack? Find out next on FSN. Welcome to College Hoops Northwest on FSN, presented by Snoqualmie Casino, Seattle's premier entertainment and dining destination. It is a cold, rainy night in Seattle, but that is not enough to dampen the lights or the spirits of everyone getting ready to close out the decade and start another as we prepare to start the 2010 calendar year. Those celebrations are still a couple hours away. We're getting the party started early tonight at the Bank of America Arena in Seattle as the dogs and the beavers open Pac-10 play. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us on this New Year's Eve. We hope that everyone is doing well and that you're ready to get underway with Pac-10 play. You know the beavers are certainly ready to start a new chapter after struggling a little bit in non-conference play. They've been trying to live up to the expectations that they set last year and ended up starting this year six and five. They're averaging just over 60 points a game. That is second lowest in the Pac-10. Seth Tarver leads the team with about 13 points a game. He's also their team leader in steals, something the Beavs are very good at. They lead the entire conference in steals per game. For more on what to expect tonight from the Beavers, let's bring in Francis Williams. And Francis, I know that you talk to this coaching staff. You're around the team quite a bit. We'll get to Francis in just a minute. I'm sorry about that. Let's hear from the players on how they have built on this win coming off of Fresno State. You, you can never be too overly prepared for the conference. I mean, but it is sure nice to go in it with a positive vibe uh, and confidence for the guys. So. Yeah, we're ready. Um, we've had some bumps in the road, but judging by our last game, we're ready. All right, now it's time to bring into Francis Williams. We just heard from the players and Francis. Again, you've been around this team. You've talked to the coaches. How do you think they are ready to go into Pac-10 play? Well, I think you nailed it when you talked about the expectations coming off the success that they had last year with the CBI championship and getting away from that 0-18 Pac-10 season they had the previous year. But the, the Fresno State win, definitely their best win of the season. And, uh, you know, they're, they're playing at a clip right now. Where they're, they're at a good point to see where they really stack up with the rest of the Pac-10. Well, as for the UW, they are getting ready to defend their Pac-10 title. They won their first outright title since 1953 last year. Defense of that title begins tonight. They finished non-conference play with a 9-2 record. They are ranked 17th in the country. In fact, the only Pac-10 team to make the national rankings as we open con conference play. And everyone knows about Quincy Pondexter and Isaiah Thomas. They are leading the dogs right now, and they know that they've got a lot on their shoulders as they head into conference play. It's going to be different, you know. I, I haven't experienced this part yet, and uh, but I know our guys are going to come out with the same focus and mentality we came out with last year, and, and knowing that everyone doubts us, and no one really thinks that we could do it, and I think that really helped us last year. The difference is everybody's coming at us now. So everybody, everybody knows what we did last year, and everybody's going to come at us harder because they don't want us to do it, and everybody thinks they have a chance to do it, you know. So everybody feels the same way, so they're going to come at the top team that won last year, and they're going to come at us hard, and we have to be prepared, prepared for that every night. This is what really counts now. I mean, we're, we're playing for this Pac-10 championship and defending our crown, so everybody's going to be coming after us, and we're going we're to be ready for it. So the dogs know that they have the target on their back. Francis, what do they need to do tonight to get off to a good start? Well, the emphasis coming into Pac-10 play has been shot selection, defending the basketball, sharing the basketball, and cutting down on the turnovers. They've done that over the last three games. 
You come off the, the win against USF where they had four guys in, in double figures, that balance, which is something that they've been looking for. So this is a team that's deep enough and they're talented enough that if they do those things, and particularly the part about sharing the basketball, uh, they can be very successful. All right. Well, one of the guys that was a little bit in question before tonight's game is Isaiah Thomas. He's their second leading scorer, averaging about 17 points a game. Now, he was limited this week in practice after suffering an ankle injury last week. I had a chance to talk to him a few minutes ago, and he said that his ankle feels okay. But, you know, there's nothing that's going to keep him out of tonight's Pac-10 opener. We'll certainly keep an eye on him and how he performs, especially early on. Well, the dogs aren't the only ones in action tonight. There's a slate full of games that we will get to. Already some great finishes around the Pac-10. You'll get to that next. College Hoops Northwest on FSN is presented by Snoqualmie Casino. Great job by Seth Tarver. The Pac-10 leader be nice. at the other end. Jams it home. Seth Tarver. Turner over his head to Overton. Damn it. You're watching College Hoops Northwest on FSN, presented by Snoqualmie Casino, Seattle's premier entertainment and dining destination. The Huskies getting ready to open Pac-10 play tonight against Oregon State. The banner proudly hangs as they try to defend their Pac-10 title. That starts tonight against the Beavers. that just get you ready for Pac-10 play? Well, I got to tell you, there's already been a few schools in action today with some great finishes that you don't want to miss. Let's get things started with UCLA as coach Ben Howland and the Bruins come out on fire against the Arizona State Sun Devils. Well, it's really Nikola Dragovich who's doing all the damage. He hits his first five three-pointers and finishes with a game-high 23 for UCLA. The Bruins shoot 83% from the field in the first half and take an 11-point lead into the locker room. Everything he throws up is going down, but ASU rallies behind Derek Glazier. He hits for three. Then he drives to the lane, takes it hard up and in for the tough layup. The Sun Devils down just two. Time is running out. ASU's going for the win. But Jared Ship's three-pointer is blocked by Jeremy Anderson at the buzzer. UCLA holds on. 72-70 is the final. And Arizona in action against USC tonight. USC knocking off the Wildcats 56-50. Now, you got to see this finish between the Oregon Ducks and Washington State over in Pullman. Ken Bone and his first season as the Cougars head coach under a second left in the first half. Check out this lay-in. Lay-in Garrett Sim. Are you kidding me? The Ducks up 11 at the break. But the Huskies show plenty of fight and toughness in the second half. But time, Clay Thompson for the Cougs. He hits the deep three and cuts the lead to three. Then it's the freshman, Reggie Moore. He drives, lays it up and in and ties the game at 62. Time running out. Moore goes for the win. It is off the mark, and they are headed to overtime in the OT. Thompson to Casto, up and in for the layup. Coops up six, but the Ducks are quick to respond to Juan Porter. Locked, loaded, knocks it down from long range. Porter on fire in overtime. He's got more coming from long range. That ties the game at 78. The Cougs take it down the court and get it into Casto. He hits the bucket. The Cougs up two, but check out the celebration. The entire team is fired up looking for the win, right? After much discussion, the Cougs are given a technical for too much celebration to Juan Porter on the line. He nails both free throws. And that sends the game to double overtime. Thompson for three. He nails it. The Cougs take the lead. But Oregon gets a final chance. Malcolm Armstead drives the lane, gets the foul in the bucket. The Ducks win by two in overtime. A great start to their season. A great finish for Washington State and Oregon over in the Palouse. Now, 
I got to say that a lot of people think that the Pac-10 is down this year. But Tom and Francis, is that what those highlights just said to you? Well, I don't know if it's down. I do know this. At least I, I, I feel this way, Francis. This is a highly competitive league, highly balanced league in those first three games. When you look at those scores and look at those highlights, I think that's a great indication of things to come. Yeah, talent-wise, if you compare to, to the individual talent that the league has had over the last two or three years, yeah, it's probably down in that regard. But it's very balanced. And, uh, you know, we've got the teams that are favored at the top, and they may hold serve. But those three games right there are just indicative of how I think the league is going to be all year long. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. We are just underway with day one. Let's take a look. At our fan polls question, we want to send your way and get your thoughts on which team you believe is the team to beat in the Pac-10 Conference. You can text in at 95323. You can pick A for the Washington Huskies, B for Oregon State, C for California, D for any other team in the conference. So you can take the field. Who's your choice as we stand here at Bank of America Arena? Well, I think Washington and Cal still remain the favorites. Uh, you know, you see Cal getting healthy, and Washington's had a great preseason. But I think USC made a huge statement last week with their win against Tennessee, their win against UNLV. They got off to a good start today by uh, holding on and, and beating uh, Arizona. So uh, I think those three teams right now, in my mind, are the, the early favorites. Of course, it's huge to win a conference title. Jen, you need to take care of your business at home, and that's what the Huskies have done to perfection so far. But it is conference play, and the Beavers will be looking for that upset here tonight. Yes, they will, and you know that they are locked and loaded and ready to go. The Huskies, by the way, would be my pick for tonight. We're going to see how Abdul Gaddy handles his first game of Pac-10 play. The freshman has made the last three starts at point guard for the Dogs. We'll see how he handles the pressure tonight against Oregon State. And speaking of the Beavers, it was Calvin Haynes that helped lead them to a win last week against Fresno State. We'll see if he can respond and do the same tonight for Oregon State. Up next, we're going to hear from the coaches, Lorenzo Romar and Craig Robinson, and get keys to the game when we come back on College Shoots Northwest. Watching College Hoops Northwest on FSN, presented by Snoqualmie Casino, Seattle's premier entertainment and dining destination. We're about 10 minutes away from tip off between the Washington Huskies and the Oregon State Beavers as we open Pac 10 play tonight from Seattle. To get more on how the dogs plan to handle the Beavs and that Princeton offense and 1 3 1 style defense, we turn it over now to Francis Williams and the coach, Lorenzo Romar. Thanks, Jen. Well, Coach Romar, we finally get to Pac-10 conference play. How important is it to have the luxury of starting Pac-10 play at home? That's always a plus. It uh, beats the alternative, you know, but uh, you got to make sure you do a good job when you're starting out at home. You don't want to give those opportunities away. Well, your team, uh, you, you've had a good preseason, and now you should have a pretty good idea of where you are. I mean, wh wh how do you assess your team's play to this point? I think we've improved. We've got to get better, uh, more consistent effort on the defensive end. We got to continue to share the basketball and always uh, have good shot selection. If we do those things, I think we'll be okay. And then with Oregon, Oregon State, their unique challenge with their style of play, uh, what is it going to take for you guys to be successful against them tonight? Well, they do a nice job in their zone. We've got to be able to get quality shots and make them. And then uh, they run a very disciplined half-court offense. We can't make very many mistakes. Okay. Well, Happy New Year to you, and good luck tonight. Thank you. Let's send it over to Jen, who's with Coach Robinson. Well, Coach Robinson, where do you think you guys are heading into Pac-10 play? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know where we are. Boy, um, we'll see tonight. I mean, it's tough starting out the season away from home, first of all, and second of all, playing the uh, the Pac-10 champions. So we'll see. We'll know after this game where we stand. I think. From a, uh, from a physical standpoint, I think we're right on point. From an emotional standpoint, I think we're doing a great job in practice. I think we're so, sort of playing now like we were playing at the end of the year rather than at the beginning of the year. But a game like this and teams like this, are uh, they're just tough to gauge until you actually play the game. Well, and your offense hasn't peaked yet, and Washington can really get up and down the court. So how do you negate that tonight? Well, you know, it's clear we're going to try and control the tempo of the game. 
to our advantage and they're going to try and do it to their advantage. So we, we're hopeful we're hopeful to keep their runouts to a minimum and uh, make sure that we don't take you know one two pass and a shot. There's no secret there. Uh, and the other thing is we have to handle their pressure. I mean their pressure creates a lot of their offense. And I would think the pressure might be on Rulin Shaftonar tonight, who's been playing better in the last couple games. But what does he need to do to help get that offense going? You know, I think he's just got to play with a lot more confidence than he has in the past. Uh, I think uh, if he does that, we're in good shape because he controls what we do. And uh, if he can handle their pressure, play with confidence, then I'm, I'm, I'll be pleased with, with that. Did you have to give your team any extra incentive or motivation tonight heading into Pac-10 play? Oh, absolutely not. No, no. I, you know, as everyone says, this is sort of like a, a new beginning for everyone. So we're all fired up and, and ready to go. Um, and there was no need to get those guys revved up. Oh, I know that we are fired up to see the team. When we come back, we will rejoin Francis and Tom and get you ready for tip off here as the Pac-10 play gets underway tonight at Hecat. Clarence Trent, it's showtime. <laughs> The Dog Pack getting ready for tonight's Pac-10 opener. They don't look too excited yet, but I guarantee you, in about three and a half minutes when we tip off, you won't get them to be quiet. Seth Tarver, the Portland native, leads Oregon State in scoring, averaging more than 13 points a game. He also leads the Pac-10 in steals. That is second in the nation at 3.2 a game. The Huskies also feature a defensive standout in Benoit Overton. He is sixth in the Pac-10 in steals. He had six in one game this year against Texas Tech. You know, the Lorenzo Romar and the Dogs would like to see that same effort from him tonight. They would like to see a win, and I think that Craig Robinson has probably preached to his team the value of controlling the ball and keeping a handle on it. Turnovers have been costly to Oregon State if they have struggled to keep that under control in the early going of this season. In fact, let's take a look at the numbers that prove how difficult it's been for them so far. <laughs> They're averaging 16.7 turnovers a game. Every player on the team has more turnovers than assists. That is certainly not a recipe for being able to win. Now for more on the Bees and the Huskies, let's turn it over to the guys who are calling tonight's action, Tom Glasgow and Francis Williams. Guys. All right, Jen, thanks so much. And Francis, let's talk big picture first of all. And for the Huskies out to defend their conference championship. Let's talk about one of the keys for them this season. What will it take for them to repeat? Well, first and foremost, they, they have to continue to play the style of basketball that, that they want to play. You know, they want to push the basketball. They want to get up into you with the pressure defense. But most importantly, they cannot turn the basketball over. They've had a problem with turnovers. They had a three-game stretch there where they were averaging 22 turnovers a game. The last three, that has come down considerably. They had a season low in turnovers in the win against USF. So they have to share the basketball, take good shots, continue to defend, and not turn it over. And for the Oregon State Beavers, a disappointing 6-5, and five, a record in non-conference play. Coach Robinson talked about Big Rue, Rule, and Shoftenar, and he will be critical for whatever success they have in conference play. Yeah, they've been waiting for Big Rule to wake up. He was so good toward the end of last year as they went into the CBI tournament and won that tournament, in which he was the most valuable player. But his numbers are down considerably from last year, with right now he's only averaging seven points and a little less than three rebounds. So they really need him to play with a lot of confidence, as Coach Robinson said, and he can facilitate that offense and really make them effective in the half court. From the big picture to the matchup tonight, the Huskies taking on Oregon State for the Beavers. What will be critical tonight to try to pull off the upset? Well, they have to handle Washington's pressure first and foremost, and then with everyone, they have to keep Washington off the backboards. If they can handle the pressure and not turn, turn the ball over at a high clip, which we just talked about that being a problem for them, that'll give them an opportunity to keep the game close and have a chance to win the game coming down the stretch. And in terms of the Huskies, we know they like to get that pace up and keep it up. Oregon State will certainly try to counter it and slow things down. 
Yeah, they will try to slow it down, and the Huskies have to do the things that we mentioned beforehand, but more importantly, they cannot allow Oregon State to dictate the tempo. Oregon State obviously wants to make it a grinded out half-court game. Washington wants to get up and down. Washington has to make sure with their pressure defense that they do not allow the tempo to be dictated by Oregon State. So a battle of wills tonight here at Bank of America Arena as the Washington Huskies and Oregon State Beavers get conference play underway. Of course, maybe the X Factor, the best player in the conference, Quincy Pondexter, number 20, does it all for the Dodge, and he'll try to do it again tonight against the Beavers. For many on New Year's Eve, the Space Needle is the place to be in Seattle or maybe a trip through downtown. But if you're a basketball fan, there is no better place to be than Bank of America Arena on the campus of the University of Washington as Pac-10 conference play is about to begin for a pair of Northwest rivals as the 17th rated Washington Huskies take on the Oregon State Beavers. And let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups as we take a look at our Oberto beef jerky starting lineups for the Washington Huskies. The forwards Matthew Bryan Amining and Darnell Gant also Quincy Pondexter in the backcourt the true freshman Abdul Gaddy and Isaiah Thomas is playing on a bit of a bum wheel tonight with a sprained ankle. We'll see how much that may impact him for the Beavers the starting lineup in the backcourt you saw Calvin Haynes and Josh Tarver, the point center, Rulin Shoftenar, and the uh, forwards, Seth Tarver and Daniel Dean. And Seth Tarver is having a, a terrific season for the Beavers, their leading scorer and leading rebounder. Let's go courtside and rejoin Jen Mueller. Jen? Well, Tom, one of the storylines that we've been following is Isaiah Thomas. He was limited this week in practice after injuring his ankle Sunday against San Francisco. And there was some question as to how much he would be able to play tonight. When I talked to him before the game, he said he was sore, but there's no way he's missing the Pac-10 opener. And if you just saw him run out, you could see the smile on the face. He is ready to go and ready to help the dogs tonight. Now, we have been asking fans all night long to text us who they think will win the Pac-10 this year. Will it be the Huskies? Oregon State is a surprise, or Cal, which is a big favorite, or could somebody else in the field possibly win that one? If I had my vote, I would certainly give it to the dogs, but here's what you said. All right, thanks so much for all of those. You know that it's going to be a good Pac-10 season either way. Guys, we'll send it back to you for game action. And we are underway in a quick start for the Beavers. Calvin Haynes with a lay in off the opening tip terrific start for Oregon State and they set up for an offensive tip thinking that they would get it and uh, executed it to perfection and the Huskies working against a, a very good Oregon State 1-3-1 one, one defense and Francis what are some of the keys to try to have some success against this defense from a Husky perspective well, on the one hand, you, you can't let it allow you to become passive. You have to still attack it. You still have to try to get penetration, move the ball, move yourself, relocate. But it's an, it kind of gives you the illusion that there's nowhere to go, and people have a tendency to be passive and just pass the ball around the perimeter and not be on the attack against it. And then against, like with, against all zones, always be strong going to the offensive glass. Huskies did a good job that time going high post and low post to Matthew Bryan Amining, who was fouled by Daniel Dean. And MBA with his first uh, free throw attempt. It is good, shooting uh, just over 51% from the line this season. And knocks them both down, and we have our first tie in this game as Calvin Haynes, number 22, will bring the ball into front court, being defended by a former teammate of his and Isaiah Thomas. Thomas called for the grabbing foul. They were teammates along with uh, Matthew Bryan Amining at South Kent Prep School back East and now they are uh, reunited again in Pac-10 play as they were last season. Yep, and Coach Chilius, now an assistant coach at Washington, was their coach. Uh, so there's uh, four guys here having a little mini reunion tonight. Seth Tarver over to his brother Josh to Haynes. 
despite his size, Shoftenar, you will not see him a lot in the low post, a point center. He'll operate mostly at the top of the key area. Tarver, 4-3, Seth Tarver knocking it down. And that's an area where Seth Tarver's showing a lot of improvement, showing the ability to knock down that three. He's not shooting a real high percentage, but he's definitely a threat to knock it down, where in the past he really wasn't. 28% shooter from beyond the arc, but not that time. Thomas out of the double team to Abdul Gaddy. The only senior on the Husky roster, Quincy Pondexter to Matthew Bryan Ammoning at the high post, working on Dean. Maybe overpassing that time, but Gant gobbles it up with a shot clock down to seven. Gaddy with the penetration. Nice look. Matthew Bryan Ammoning with the finish. Abdul Gaddy with the vision. Well, kind of on a broken play, but he picks up the loose ball and looks to penetrate, gets into the teeth of the defense. Matthew Brian Ammon, he had basically had the ball in that same position and turned down a 12-foot shot. He's got to turn and face the basket when he gets the ball at that high post position. Seth Tarver into his brother Josh for the easy deuce. And a nice job by Oregon State to post up Josh Tarver against the freshman Gaddy. At that time, trying to split the defense, nearly turned the ball over. On Dexter for three. Off the rim and the rebound by Seth Tarver. Long three ball by Shoftenar, and that's one reason why he operates in that area. He can and, knock it down. And that's what they've been looking for. They've been waiting for that from him all season long. They gave, he gave it to him last year. 13 and a half points a game, only averaging seven so far this year, but knocking down that three will probably be huge for Shaftenar's confidence. Inside Pondexter off the glass. Terrific early energy to this contest between these Northwest rivals. Well, everyone waiting for Pac-10 play to get started, so here on this New Year's Eve, we've got us a good one right here. Calvin Haynes coming off 25 points in Oregon State's last game. That was eight days ago against Fresno State. That's his area where he likes to release his shots. That right wing did not get that one to go. Yeah, they'll live with that shot. That's the shot that he can make down all, knock down all day. Nice aggressive move to the rack that time by Matthew Bryan Ammoning. Ammoning does a good job of getting to the short corner there. Another dead spot against his own. This time he does turn and look at the basket and he's got a wide open look. Six early points for a player averaging just eight and a half per game. So a terrific start for Matthew Bryan Ammoning. Oregon State with a two point lead. Run a Princeton offense, a lot of back cutting as a defender. You need to be very focused. In and out is Seth Tarver. Again, again in the corner. Looking for some help and finds Brian Ammoning. Washington needs to get, needs to get some movement. And uh, right now, they are playing a little stagnant as they're just seem a little, a little confused. A skip pass over to Gant by Gaddy. Good look by Gaddy to, fi to find uh, Gant. And that's his range anywhere from that 10 to 12 foot area along the baseline there. That's that's his, uh, his sweet spot. There's two points for Darnell Gant as he ties the game at 10. Dean in trouble. Nearly an over and back. Nice save by Haynes. Carver with some separation over Pondexter can't finish. Ball last touched by Darnell Gant off his leg. It'll be Oregon State basketball. Terrific early start between the Beavers and the Huskies. We are tied at 10. Welcome back to Bank of America Arena. 15 19 left in the first half. Tied at 10 between the 17th rated Huskies and the Oregon State Beavers on this final day of the decade. We want to know which UW team was your favorite from this decade. The 04 Cardiac Kids, who defeated uh, Oregon State down in Corvallis after trailing by a 16 late in that game. That really turned around their season. Your second choice, B, is the 05 Club, which was a number one seed going into the NCAA tournament and the team that just last season won the Pac-10 championship. You can text us A, B, or C to 95323. Well, so far, and I know we're early, but this game being played at a Washington pace, 
See if Oregon State maybe tries to get things going a little bit slower. Inside, Haynes stripped by Vinoy Overton, who has checked into the ball game. And Overton goes coast to coast, a little strong. Ganny's tip no good. Shaftenar with a rebound for the Beavers. Elston Turner has also checked in to the Husky lineup. And Omari Johnson has checked in for Oregon State. Number 24 making the pass right there. Huskies dodged a bullet on that turn. Uh, Beavers, I'm sorry, dodged a bullet on that turnover because getting out in transition, they get that bucket to go. Now they can get into their full court pressure defense and get the game going at the tempo they'd like. Now we'll go against Matthew Bryan Amining. That is his first, second team foul. One team foul on Oregon State. Brian Amining heads to the Husky bench as Justin Holiday checks in. Also Tyrese Brashears in for the Huskies as well. Inside ball lost by Seth Tarver. Johnson picks it up. Inside Shaftenar and one and he'll head to the line. And that's Shaftenar's versatility. We saw him knock down almost an NBA NBA range three. Now he goes down to the block has a bit of a mismatch with regards to his height over Holiday. He just turns and looks they help his little late from Overton to get there and he has a chance for the three point play. Lathan Wallace now into the lineup for Oregon State as Josh Tarver checks out. Abdul Gandhi, by the way, the only starter on the floor for the Huskies as Shaftenar completes the three point play in Oregon State with a 13 10 lead. And Omari Johnson is in the game for Oregon State. Gives them some length over there on the wing. He's six foot seven. Basically plays on the wing. Nice save by Johnson right on cue, but he really gives them some added versatility with his length and his size and his ability to play on the wing offensively and defensively. Wallace with the lay in. Steal by Tarver. Back to back steals by Seth Tarver. And the find and the layup is good by Omari Johnson. And Lorenzo Romar wants a timeout with Oregon State on a 7-0 run. Well, Oregon State likes to get in the 1-3-1. Seth Tarver with the deflection, passes ahead to Johnson, who saves it for Wallace for the layup. And then the next possession for Washington, they turn it over again, and Seth Tarver shows you why he's second in the nation and first in the tack, Pac-10 and steals. Nice job of handling the ball. Johnson runs the floor and gets the layup. 7-0 run for the Beavers. 17-10 lead right now. Tarver averaging 3.2 steals per game. Early results from our fan polls question, which UW team was your favorite from this decade? And right now it's the 04 Cardiac Kids. And it was one Nate Robinson in that game at Oregon State that really ignited What do you things. take? Can, you, can, I, can, you, can there be a bad choice? I mean, no, they're all there can excellent. Be. Uh, I've got to go with that 04 team as well because not I think not only did that turn that season around but it, it got this program uh, going in a direction that uh, was really important for it. I'll give you mine later. All right. Apparently we do not agree. Strip Shaftenar with the steal on Overton three on one for the Beavers. Haynes inside a 9-0 Oregon State run. And that's a nice job by Seth Tarver with that 3-0-1 break to know who he had running with him. He gives him the, the ball to Haynes who's a lefty who's on the left hand side of the court so he can finish with a strong hand. Four points now for Calvin Haynes. Overton driving in. Floater is good. Nicely done with a right hand by Vinoy Overton who since going to the bench three games ago has scored double figures in each of those games done a nice job in that role. The backcourt has been pretty solid for Washington Overton scoring has gone up and Thomas 19 assists and only three turnovers in the last three games. Turner deflecting the pass Huskies hoping to take advantage of the turnover. Holiday Overton Thomas for three. Got it. Good ball moving by Washington. Holiday had a shot. He decides to swing it to Overton. He gets it to Thomas for a better shot. Isaiah Thomas in a bit of a scoring slump, averaging 6.3 points over his previous three games, but the assist number is up to 6.3 per contest in that same stretch. Wallace missing. Thomas on the push for the dogs. Nice look inside. Brashears lost it going up. Gets the offensive rebound. And a foul will go against Rulin Shaftenar. Well, this is what Isaiah Thomas has been doing a lot of here over the last three games. Finds Bashir's down for the for a good look around the rim. He comes up a little bit short, but his strength allows him to get the rebound back from Shaftenar and draw the foul. 
Two team fouls on Oregon State. Coming in to Pond Dexter, who has returned to the lineup, comes up short, follows his shot. It's a back. Thomas with a penetration. Tip no good by Pond Dexter. Holiday. He does that very well, very active on the offensive glass as Justin Holiday, lean and long. Two things that Oregon State cannot allow penetration by Thomas, and then they just give Washington three attempts at the basket as they crash the offensive board. Oregon State went on a 9-0 run. The Huskies have come right back with a 7-0 run of their own. Oregon State needs to be patient, get a little bit deeper into the shot clock here maybe to get the tempo back to the way that they'd like it. Haynes for two. Wow, big shot by Haynes. Calvin Haynes, Calvin Haynes coming into the game averaging 11.3 per contest and as we Mentioned 25 the last time out against Fresno State. Brashears inside. He's fouled by freshman Joe Burton, who is a load at 295 pounds. We see Thomas with the penetration. Washington doing what they do best, pounding the offensive boards. But Calvin Haynes has the answer. Right now, the Beavs are up 21-17. 21-17, Oregon State leading Washington. Let's go courtside and check in with Jen Mueller. Well, we've seen Calvin Haynes recently kind of light it up here. He's coming off a 25-point performance against Fresno State, and that came after a phone call from his dad who said he wanted to see something out of Calvin, and he responded. Part of that conversation was also just reassuring Calvin that his mom is doing better. She's been very sick in Hawaii, and Calvin wanted to make sure that we sent her a shout-out. So here's a shout-out to Tracy and the rest of the Haynes family. He says he's playing hard because that's what he knows that she would want him to do. All right, Jen, good stuff, and we certainly wish her the best. All last touched by Joe Burton of Oregon State. And it'll be Washington ball. Oregon State has uh, the two freshmen that have been playing the most amount of minutes for them, Burton and Cunningham, in the game right now. Balanced scoring for both teams so far. Six different players have scored for both teams. So a lot of folks getting involved early in this Pac-10 opener for the Huskies and Beavers. <laughs> Traveling on Pondexter. Four turnovers for the Huskies. Oregon State with two so far. In the pre-game we talked about the turnover issues Oregon State has had and they hope to uh, deal with Washington's pressure tonight and not get caught up in that. Burden out high. Backdoor cut, Johnson. And Elston Turner with a rebound for the Huskies. Thomas. Holiday open, passed up the shot. Air ball on that attempt as he hit nothing but the weak side of that backboard. And it'll be Oregon State ball. And Holiday spent a lot of time uh, after shoot around this afternoon, really taking a lot of shots working uh, with, with Coach Paul Fortier. And uh, that's something that he's kind of been struggling with, his outside shot. Yeah, shooting just over 30% on the season. Two for nine from three-point range. Solid at the free throw line, he's trying to get things figured out from the floor. Burton, quick spin move. Strong on that layup, though. Turner with the rebound out to Overton, to Pondexter. Ended by Johnson. Overton for three, comes up short. Rebound by Calvin Haynes. A good job by Johnson to take that baseline drive away from Pondexter. Beavers by four. Jared Cunningham, number one with the ball. True freshman out of Oakland. In to see his first action. Overton with the steal and then fouled by Haynes. Terrific job by Vinoy Overton. Well, Greg Robinson not real happy with Seth kind of a lazy handoff. Seth Tarver's the number one thief in the league, but Vinoy Overton's a thief in his own right. And you make a mistake handling the ball with him, he will take it from you. Nice splitting of the defense there. The runner was strong. And Burton flying out with those elbows. Overton like didn't it. like it. Burton, true freshman, really coming into the game and providing some energy and some physical play for Oregon State. Out of Hemet, California. 
Good move by Burton. Stolen by Overton. Ahead to Thomas. We'll test that ankle out here, maybe. Beautiful job on the reverse by Isaiah Thomas. Good job by Overton to pass the ball ahead to Thomas. Overton uses the rim as a shield so Johnson can't get to it to try to block the shot. Thomas with five points. The Huskies within two, and Haynes throws it away, hounded by Vinoy Overton. You see Big Joe Burton just clearing out some space and making people respect him. He's a freshman, so people might try to come after him. But then you see Overton with another steal, passing ahead to Thomas with the acrobatic layup for the two. Abdul Gaddy returning for the Huskies. So it's Gaddy, Overton, Thomas, Pondexter, and Matthew Bryan Ameny. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Overton thought about the three. Swing it over to Thomas for a three. Isaiah Thomas. It's a lot more patient than Washington wants to be, but that's the way Oregon State's going to make them play. But that's great ball movement. Wide open look for Thomas, and he knocks down another three. So the Huskies have wiped out the early nine-point deficit to reclaim the lead at 22-21. Got a mismatch on the post. Thomas on Shafton if they can get him the ball. Aims for three. Likes that spot. First Husky lead in this game. Gaddy, Matthew Bryan, Ameny. Little strong. Pondexter inside. Oh. And he'll head to the line for two. Aggressive work on the glass by the Huskies, but that is how they function with or without John Brockman. This is the approach they take. It's a good look ahead by Gaddy. Brian Ammoning has to go stronger to the basket than that. He's 6'9, 6'10, 250 pounds. Nobody out there that, that can deal with him except maybe Burton, but he's got to take that ball to the basket stronger than he did on that play. Foul on Calvin Haynes is his second. It's the 15 foul against Oregon State. Substitution Josh Tarver returning for Oregon State and another true freshman checking in, Agnes Brandt from Sydney, Australia. So Brandt, Burton, Cunningham, true freshmen all. And the guys that are already contributing to this Oregon State program. We're talking to Coach Robinson today at shooting around. He really likes Brent. You look at his body. He's already physically big enough to handle the, the play at this level. And he's an excellent outside shooter, which is good for a big man in this offense. On Dexter off the Oregon State miss. Pushing. Nice crossover inside. Did not draw the foul. Daddy inside. Find Dexter. Bumped on the baseline. See if Shoftenar picks that up. Always loaded with energy is Quincy Pondexter. And not feeling the effects of the ankle so far in this game is Isaiah Thomas on an early roll for the Dots. Washington Huskies on a 13 to 2 run and they lead the Oregon State Beavers 23 21 here at Bank of America Arena on New Year's Eve. Let's go courtside again to Jen Mueller. I've got a pretty good view of the Husky bench right now and guys I got to say that this is the most energy I have seen this Husky team have since they started the season. Francis is this something that they can keep up during the entire course of the game because they haven't really been tested that way too much. Oh, I absolutely think they can because what they've been developing throughout the 11 game preseason is the depth and uh, you know 757 left here in the first half they've already played nine guys and we've pretty much seen that all season long that they will go eight nine ten sometimes 11 deep even in the first half so no this is exactly what they've been preparing for. From that energy being displayed on the glass the Huskies with an early 14 to 6 rebound advantage seven of those boards on the offensive end Oregon State with just one offensive rebound so far. Huskies look to build on their two point lead Abdul Gaddy guarded by Calvin Haynes and it off to Thomas. Left handers going head to head. Thomas with a spin move. Hangs. Gaddy open for three. Strong. He's had his issues from beyond the arc. Overton inside. Gets the rebound. Out to Thomas for three. No good. Rebound by Seth Tarver for Oregon State. Grant. The 
Whistle away from the ball. And that'll go against Abdul Gaddy. So which UW team was your favorite from this decade? Tell you what, very close voting, but the voting is in, and it's the Cardiac Kids from 2004. Second foul on Abdul Gaddy as he checks out. Elston Turner returns. We talked about Gaddy's issues from beyond the arc as he missed that last three. Now one of 13 from three-point range this season for the true freshman out of Bellarmine Prep in Tacoma. There's another true freshman. Stolen by Pondexter. He'll go to work on Brant. Lost it, picked it up, and called for the travel. That's a good call. That's a good call. Getting word that uh, Scott Suggs is ill with flu-like sy symptoms, is not on the bench and not expected to play tonight, and that's unfortunate for the Huskies because he's been playing his best ball of the season. Yeah, he's been playing very well. He and Holiday and, and Turner really been battling for minutes, and he seemed to have created a little separation for himself, so unfortunately he's uh, out of line tonight being ill. Grant open for three. Rebound Cunningham. Lost it going down, and Turner comes up with it. Look ahead. Break for the Huskies. Overton. Blocked by Seth Tarver. Goaltending call. Did not initially hear the whistle. Looked like the ball was pinned on the glass. Get another look at it. Well, Seth Tarver's one of the best athletes in the Pac-10. You've seen Overton going to the glass. And looks like it's a good call. Did hit the glass first. So. The Husky lead is at four at 25-21. Overton with four points. Burton inside draws contact, which he will do a lot with that frame. Clear out some space, big fella. Let him know he's going to get four years of this. <laughs> All going off of Brandt. I'm not sure any, but how about the guys who have to practice against him? Those are the guys that are going to take that yep. punishment for four years. I'm just, I'm just getting started, so you better get ready. Take another look. Well, yeah, from that angle. It was close. On Dexter stripped inside and last touched by Quincy. The turnover will give the ball to the Beavers. And you see Seth Tarver again with the good hands. He won't get credit for a steal there. But he's so active with his hands and just has great anticipation, and he creates that turnover with the double team by he and Burton. Speaking of Joe Burton, I wonder if Mike Riley's had any conversations with him, the Oregon State football coach. Well, the other teams in the Pac-10, basketball-wise, did not recruit him. If Overton gets a steal. And draws contact. That was his intent as he went up looking for the three-point play. Didn't get the basket. But he will head to the line for a couple of free throws. Seventh team foul against Oregon State. Illinois well, Overton, you know, sixth, seventh in the league in, in steals. And uh, he has two or three here tonight. But he's anytime you mishandle the basketball, you're careless. He's always lurking, looking for an opportunity to, to pick your pocket. Foul on Omari Johnson, his first. So from here on out, it's the bonus for the Huskies, who have just 14 fouls right now with 5.59 left in the first half. Looks like we may have a, a player, Jared Cunningham, I believe, being tended to, a little blood. cut or a scratch. The trainer will take care of that. Go back to Burton for a minute. Uh, yep. Other teams in the Pac-10 didn't recruit him because they thought he wasn't tall enough. Uh, you know, he's a big body. He's light on his feet. He has good hands. And you can already see that he, he comes with some tenacity. So Oregon State, uh, you know, took a chance on him. And I, I know that Jen has something to add to this later, but he is the first Native American player to get a scholarship to play uh, basketball in the Pac-10. Good for him. He's, I tell you, he gets the ball. What I like about him in the early impressions and watching some of that Fresno State game, when he gets the ball in the low post, he's got a plan. Oh, yeah. And, and he can act and move quickly on that plan. So Greg Robinson has a nice find in Joe Burton. Looks like they're going to clean up some blood in the paint. Let's uh, go courtside to Jen again. Jen? Well, you know that Joe Burton's already making his family proud, as Francis mentioned. But, you know, he's only the second member of his tribe to meet a sitting president. Of course, the Oregon State Beavers met President Bar Barack Obama earlier this year. The first member of his tribe to meet a sitting president met President Roosevelt. So you could see how long it had been and how proud not only his family is, but also the members of his Native American tribe. Good look at Joe right there. It's Roy Overton hits the first free throw. Overton at the line of this season. Shoots 70 percent. 5'11 junior out of Franklin High School in Seattle. 
averaging seven and a half per game. And puts the Huskies up by four at 27 23. Seth Tarver guarded by Pondexter. There's a couple of bodies going at it. Brashears for the Huskies and Burton for the Beavers in the low block. The Huskies said, we, we got to an answer for you, Joe. We got Tyrese. Yeah, that answer is about 60 pounds lighter, though. That's the only problem. Lathan Wallace backing in. Shot clock at seven. Omari Johnson, jump hook, nice touch by Omari Johnson, the junior out of Dorsey High School in Los Angeles, averaging just over five per game. That's just a nice individual effort by Johnson to create his own offense and finish the play. Has four points now. Turner out of control, and he traveled. Not sure that was the best decision by Elston Turner to try to split that defense, and he turns it over for Washington. Seven turnovers now. Oregon State with eight. And as much as you want to be on the attack and try to get some penetration, that's not Turner's game. And he can draw a couple of defenders to him to create some angles to pass the ball, but try to actually penetrate the zone. That, that's not the strength of his game, and the turnover is probably more likely going to happen than not. This move by Wallace going up strong over Brashears. Lathan Wallace, junior out of Jefferson High School in Portland, averaging just over five a game. Turner with the open look. It's the offensive rebound. There's Tarver. Tarver on Overton. There you go. Two thieves match up against each other. Avenelli coming up with it again. Gant saves it for Washington. Pond Dexter fouled by Burton. Game tied at 27 with Quincy Pond Dexter heading to the line. Well, Pondexter's been pretty quiet offensively. Definitely a, a, a foul on Burton that time. And Quincy Pondexter having a great year, averaging almost 22 points per game, trying to get to the basket to be aggressive to uh, get to the line where he's shooting almost 85%. Fell on Burton his second. Pondexter went for two at the line tonight. Earns the second. Great season for Quincy Pondexter, averaging just under 22 points per game, 8.4 rebounds per contest. And this is a guy who is not even in the top 10 in minutes played in the conference. So he makes the most out of his time on the court as he now heads to the bench. Isaiah Thomas returns. The Huskies 7 out of 10 at the free throw line. Oregon State has made one of one. Yeah, Quincy has been very, very efficient with it with his basketball game this year shooting like 57 percent from the floor along with the 85 percent or so that he's shooting from the foul line Burton going to work on the baseline and stepped on that baseline and Husky fans didn't get the uh, turnover they wanted but they'll take that one we see a little contact out front here Nathan Wallace with the push off against Overton but there's no call and so that's what the boos are about here from the from the Husky fans. Would have been a foul and a turnover, but no call. Huskies lead by two, and Thomas nearly losing it. See, and that that one three one that Oregon State likes to play with Tarver out front. I mean, he is so active, so great with his anticipation. He has good hands. He's strong, so he can really make it difficult for you out there handling the basketball. And he always makes you handle the ball strongly, or he'll take it from you. Tarver out harassing Thomas. Finds Holiday open in the corner for two. Comes up short. Rebound by Burton. Good box out by Burton against the Shears. Wallace back to Seth Tarver. Jesuit High School in Portland. Brashears with some nice help defense. Thomas in transition. Lost it on his Lost way it. up and turned it over. Oregon State ball. 3-34 left to play in the first half. It is a tight contest between the nation's 17th rated team and the Beats. It's not a bad way to spend New Year's Eve out on a ferry boat on Puget Sound. Welcome back to Bank of America Arena. The Huskies leading the Beavers 29 to 27. Got another fan pulse question for you. Which UW player was your favorite to watch this decade? Brandon Roy? 
Nate Robinson or John Brockman. You can text A, B, or C to 95323. That guy's kind of fun to watch, too. Maybe in 10 years when we in ask the question years. again, he'll make that list. Well, the previous question, B, would have been my choice because just for the reason that Brandon Roy came off the bench on that team. That, that, team, 05 was, team. that 05 team. That team, to me, was uh, – was something special and the difference between them and Louisville who they eventually lost to is that Louisville had a bunch of guys that were grown men. Yeah they were they were a little bit older a little more mature. That can make a difference it especially difference when it comes to turning time. But uh, Brandon Roy was great coming down the stretch coming off the bench for that team and that, that was my favorite team. Josh Tarver harassed by Vinoy Overton. Really throws the ball away. Wallace saving it in the corner. Going to work on Thomas. Matthew Brian Amening who leads the Huskies in blocks gets that rejection. Overton off glass. That gets the crowd alive here at Bank of America. Well, Lathan Wallace has to know that there's going to be some help coming. He had the mismatch against Thomas and he was trying to post him up. But uh, Brian Manning was just waiting for him. And now NBA with the steal. Three on two Huskies. Holiday pulling it out feeds back to Brian Amening who draws the foul and he'll head to the line. So some spark being provided by Matthew Brian Amening. Well Brian Amening you can see he's just measuring Wallace just waiting for him to turn so he can block the shot and that gets Washington out in transition and a nice job by Overton with the inside out dribble to go and finish with with the right hand. Brian Amening with now seven points. Three for three at the line. Again, very close voting. So look at which UW player was your favorite to watch this decade. Brandon Roy leading Nate Robinson, who's got a bit of a lead on John Brockman. Husky lead at five with 241 left in the first half. Husky's up by six, their biggest lead. And that overplay the last defensive segment there for Washington, that overplay by Ryan Manning. Gives you some idea of how athletic this Washington group is as uh, Overton is looking for another steal. Nearly got it, Haynes. I thought Haynes was going to be called for a travel as he got up off the court. Lorenzo Romar not happy with what he saw at the other end. Yeah. And the fans clearly don't like it either. Well, Overton, one of the best on the ball defenders in the country. There's a scramble for that loose ball, and as you said, Haynes gets up. That's, that, a, that's travel. a travel. That's automatic. And of course, Lorenzo is not usually quite that animated, but uh, he's livid about that one. But uh, they'll get one here. Haynes inside, followed by Burton. Big Joe. Big Joe on the glass. Burton now with four points. Overton for three. And Benoit Overton, the first player in the game, into double figures now with 11. So he continues his strong offensive play off the bench. You, you said it best. The last three games offensively, his numbers have, have been going up. And right now on the offensive end, he's playing with a lot of confidence. As Thomas gets the steal. And the finish. Burton had no idea where Isaiah Thomas was. And the Huskies with their largest lead at nine. And Craig Robinson needs and will take a timeout. Well, we've talked a lot about Joe Burton, but here he makes a freshman mistake of not being strong with the basketball. And Thomas just comes from behind him and picks his pocket. And it seems like the play there at half court where the travel was not called has kind of fired up this Husky basketball team. Isaiah Thomas now into double figures with 10 points. Later tonight, Huskies All Access takes center court as we go one on one with Coach Lorenzo Romar and look ahead to Washington's upcoming matchup with the Oregon Ducks. And tomorrow, it's the latest on the orange and black with Beavers All Access. Catch unparalleled coverage of your favorite teams all season long on FSN and FSN HD. Overton with 11, Thomas with 10, Matthew Bryan Amening with 8 to lead the Huskies in scoring. Ruin Schaftenar with 6, and Calvin Haynes with 6 to lead the Beavers. Now, this is where Oregon State has to really be careful, and uh, they, they've got a couple things working against them as they have the freshman Cunningham 
trying to handle the ball in this environment against one of the best on the ball defenders in the country. But they've got to be careful right now. It's a nine point deficit and that can balloon to 15 or 20 real quick, even with a minute and a half left in the, in the first half. I think this building was the loudest we have heard it this season during that last sequence. No doubt. No doubt. And again, part of that, it's conference play. Yes, sir. Seth Tarver checking out for Oregon State. Josh Tarver to inbound. Finding Cunningham. He plows into Isaiah Thomas. He draws the foul. And as we said, there's a freshman getting a little bit caught up in the moment. Goes to the basket, gets a foul, got the shot blocked. And they have to be real careful. The seniors out there, Josh Tarver in particular, and Wallace, uh, they have got to lead the squad right now with, with uh, Seth Tarver being over on the bench for the last minute and a half. 18 point swing in this first half. The Beavers at one point led 19 to 10. Huskies now lead by nine at 38 29. And Wallace and, and Tarver are the two that have been through this before, so they have to provide some leadership as Wallace is only a junior but Josh Tarver is a senior he's got to step up and provide leadership during this last minute. It's got a little lax of days ago with the ball on the offensive end turns it over. We are inside a minute to play here in the first half. Cunningham Johnson inside to Burton. Nice job. Despite a tug on his yep. jersey he just played through that. Joe Burton now with six points. Just did a nice job for round one. They wanted to isolate Burton on the post and get him a look. Right next to baseline, relatively quiet offensively in the first half. Thomas, for three, not quiet at all. Stroke it. Isaiah Thomas with 13 points. He's hit three of four from beyond the arc. No. And the Huskies with a double digit lead now. And Oregon State wants to make sure that they go down. Going the half down, no more than the 10 that they're already down. And Wallace going to the rack, draws contact, he'll head to the line. Also, Justin Holiday, his first. Foul on Justin Holiday, his first sixth team foul. And Lathan Wallace, Lathan Lathan Wallace Jr., will line. head to the line where he shoots 73%. Oh, look at the comeback by John Brockman. Which UW player was your favorite to watch this decade? I thought Nate might win that just, you know, just because of the size issue. He did so many spectacular things in that very compact package. But uh, again, I don't know that you can go wrong picking any of those guys. Wallace's work done at the line. Ten and a half seconds for the Huskies to get a shot off. Thomas gets the pick from Brian Amnick. Find inside to Overton. Cleaned up by Pondexter. And Quincy Pondexter in the right place at the right time. Offensive rebounding certainly in favor of the Huskies in the first half as they head to the locker room with a 10 point advantage. 43 to 33. They finish the first half with a 16 to 6 run. Halftime coverage coming your way up next on FSN. You know, Francis, I was wondering what happened to my hat. We have <laughs> found it. Good news. Welcome back. Halftime at Bank of America Arena, a 10 point lead. For the Huskies, who Francis turned pressure D into easy offense. Well, there was two things that we said that Oregon State was going to have to guard against, and that was number one, turning the basketball over, and number two, keeping Washington off the offensive glass. Well, Oregon State turned it over 12 times in the first half and gave up 10 offensive rebounds to Washington, and that really is the difference in the game as Washington has the 10 point cushion. And you look at the guys leading the way Isaiah Thomas with 13 points, three of for shooting from beyond the arc and Vinoy Overton for the fourth straight game in double figures off the bench and he reaches that in the first half here tonight for Oregon State though uh, they had a nice stretch defensively in the first half that they turned into offense. Oh they really did they got had that 9 0 spurt to to start the first half that really got them out and gave them some confidence to know that they could play with Washington and uh, at that point they had Washington on their heels and uh, let them know that they were going to be in for a game Seth Tarver leading the league in steals and second in the nation. True to form has three steals in the first half. 
Very balanced attack for the Beavers. As you look at the numbers, they are led by four players with six points each. Shaftanar, Burton, the true freshman, Haynes, and uh, they're just getting it done. Lathan Wallace also off the bench as he contributed six points as we are underway in the second half. And Josh Tarver with the rejection of Abdul Gaddy, who is driving in. For the Huskies on the court, Gaddy, Isaiah Thomas, Darnell Gant, Matthew Bryan Amening, and Quincy Pondexter, their original starting five. And the Beavers also back with their original starting five in this game as Gant comes up short from the foul line and Shoftenar hauls it in. Calvin Haynes, Josh Tarver, Seth Tarver, Daniel Dean and Rulin Shofton are on the court for Oregon State. And Oregon State with those 10, I'm sorry, 12 first half turnovers. But shooting wise, 14 for 26, 53% from the floor. So if they just don't turn it over, offensively they were doing a good job when they were getting looks at the basket. He nearly traveled, but got the bucket down. Daniel Dean, his first points. Trying to find his way, and this is freshman year. Thomas for three. He's been hot from beyond the arc. Little strong that time, and Seth Tarver tracks it down for Oregon State. Got to be, got to be ready to, to take that shot when the ball's reversed to him. Can't hesitate. Got to be confident that he could knock it down. Josh Tarver inside to Dean, guarded by Brian Amining, going to work on him and. Draws contact. Let's go courtside to Jen Mueller. Jen? Well, talking to both coaches at halftime, Husky coach Lorenzo Romar said the dogs cannot afford to miss defensive assignments and applaud his team to stick to their principle. Meanwhile, the Oregon State coaches said that their defensive game plan was good. They just couldn't get the rebounds. They also credited Benoit Overton for his pesky defense, something the Husky fans knew and now the Beaver fans know too. Tyrese Brashears. Came up with that rebound, and then the Huskies promptly throw it away. And Quincy Pondexter limping a bit. It looks like on his right leg. Not sure what happened to him. Looks like he's walking it off fine. And that's a, a great observation by the Oregon State coaching staff as Benoit Overton in the first half had four steals. Tarver to Tarver and over to Haynes. Being open, he'll take the three. Only his shot. Thomas comes up with a loose ball and he'll push on Dexter. Quincy in the corner. Backs it down. Quincy Pondexter with nine points, three of seven from the floor for the senior out of Fresno. Shots been available along the baseline the entire game, and there's a vast improvement in Quincy Pondexter's mid-range game as he shows it by knocking down that 17-footer from the corner. Shoftenar draws contact. He'll head to the line. Quincy also with a, a game-high six rebounds. As Washington had a 17 to nine rebounding edge. Check it. Updated uh, 19 to 10 rebounding edge for the Huskies in the first half against the Beavers as Shaftenar heads to the line. Where he hits 73%, a native of the Netherlands. He's put on about 15, 20 pounds, and, he, and his body looks you know, a lot better than it did last year. I still don't think he's, he likes life around the, you know, down on the block. I don't think he likes it down there. He'd prefer to be out on the perimeter, but at his size and, and with his length, uh, when he has an opportunity to go down and mix it up down low, he needs to do that to, to help out this Oregon State team. A lot of big guys out of Europe play that way. They, yes. they play that perimeter game, not so much uh, banging in the paint. Yeah, no, he's very skilled on the perimeter. He can, he can definitely do some things. There you yeah, go, That'll help build the confidence as Abdul Gaddy hits the jumper. And he's had that shot several times here throughout this game. He just has to step up and take it. Shoftenar off balance, nearly got it to go. Pondexter with the rebound, his seventh. Huskies with the 11-point lead. Thomas puts the defense and traveled. Oh, trying to do a little too much. As obvious as the Haynes travel in the first mm -hmm. half, but <laughs> that one was called as it should have been. Huskies with 11 turnovers. That's not a good number for them either. Oregon State with 12. Josh Tarver and one the block on Thomas 
Nice explosive move to the rack mm -hmm. by Tarver. And you see Oregon State actually moved their offense up a little bit and had everyone up a little bit higher. And that created that scene there that Tarver attacked and got all the way to the rim. Definitely a block there on Thomas. If you are wondering, the Tarvers are both seniors, but Josh is a year older than Seth. Josh redshirted his freshman year due to injury, averaging four and a half points per game. And knocks down the free throw. And the Beavers within eight at 47 to 39. Joe Burton has returned to the Oregon State lineup. Holiday in for the Huskies with the ball. Let's pass inside to Bershears. Got good position on Burton and the nice entry pass by Holiday. Well, the shot fake and the ball fake by Holiday moved Burton, and that allowed Bershears to do a, a good job of getting a seal there on the on the post. And a nice job by Holiday to deliver that pass. First two points for Tyrese Bershears. Back at you. Inside, <laughs> Burton will head to the line. Fouled by Quincy Pondexter. Second on Pondexter. Fourth team foul against the Huskies. And a nice, nice job by Bashirs to just continue to move and be active on the post and position himself to receive the pass from Holiday. But man, I'm looking forward to seeing these two, Burton and Bashirs, go at it for the next, <laughs> the next four years. This is going to be fun. Burton hits the free throw. Joe at the line hits 67 percent. Benoit Overton checking in for the Huskies. Isaiah Thomas checking out. Shaftenar heading to the Oregon State bench. Dean returns. Ron Dexter losing the ball. And it looks like it went off of Quincy's leg, maybe his foot. Gaddy was in there as well. Bottom line, Oregon State to inbound. And this is where Washington has to be careful because right now the game has slowed down. And Oregon State has it at the, uh, the pace they'd like for it to be played. And a big three or a bucket here, and it definitely gives them give them some, some added life. And the first half at a Washington base at 43-33. Dean being harassed by Holiday gets it over to Seth Tarver. Jumper over Pine Dexter, nothing but twine. Seth Tarver. The leading scorer for the Beavers. And we talked earlier about him really showing some improvement with his shooting, and for him to knock down that mid-range shot is uh, an added plus for the Beavers. Leading scorer at over 13 per game, just five so far. There and man, is. always getting those hands into that passing lane. Nearly came up with another steal. 15, so the Huskies with a seven-point lead. They can't shake the Beavers so far. We'll see what. Both teams have coming up next. Gorgeous shot of the Christmas star, holiday star on the Macy store in downtown Seattle as we welcome you back inside Bank of America Arena, 1521. Left in the second half, the Washington Huskies, the nation's 17th rated team with a seven point lead over the Oregon State Beavers on the opening day of play in the Pac-10 Conference on the final day of the decade and a Husky turnover. That is turnover number 12, giving the ball back to Oregon State. Oregon State comes out of the timeout, gives Washington a little something different to look at with the half-court trap, and I think a little lack of concentration that time by Quincy Pondexter as he did not go after that basketball with two hands. Josh Tarver guarded by Abdul Gaddy. Defense by Gaddy. Bob inside, a little strong for Shaftenar, but Seth Tarver picks it up. Rebound by Brashears. Look ahead to Holiday. Gaddy passing up for three. And hear a little bit of a yeah. rumbling in the he turned crowd. Down. The fans are saying, take the shot. He turned down two looks, and, and the way Washington wants to play the tempo that they like the game to be played at, he needs to take those shots, because those are not bad shots in the Washington offense in the way that they approach the game. And it can make it tough on your teammates who are anticipating a shot and thinking rebound, and then they have to readjust. Pondexter in and out, rebound by Dean. Tough, tough luck there for Pondexter. Quincy with nine points, seven rebounds.
And Oregon mm -hmm. State is really concentrating on trying to get the basketball here inside in the second half. Bean was posting up Brashears. Shoftenar driving in and drawing contact. And a foul on Pondexter. So the Washington bench probably wants to travel, but uh, there was definitely contact on the play. As Shaftenar with the ball fake puts it on the floor, and it's 6 10. See, Pondexter's got a hand on his hip. There's contact, so it could go either way, but the foul is called. Third foul on Tom Dexter, 15 foul against the Huskies. Oregon State has not committed a foul this half. Dean guarded by Matthew Bryan Amening, who's checked in, and the nice feed to Shoftenar for the easy lay in. And the Beavers pull within five. And as, as we mentioned, really focusing on the second half of getting the ball inside. We've seen him go to Dean. We see him go to Tarver. We see him now go to Shaftonar. Really working on the offense on the on the interior. Oregon State with a strong start in this early portion of the second half. The Huskies up 49-44 in the second half against the Beavers. It's time to hear from you again. It's another fan pulse question for you, and now we're asking you which unsung hero was your favorite to watch this decade? Here are your choices. David Lucas, who went from walk-on to superstar at Oregon State. Lamar Hurd, one of our broadcasters. You know, no Beaver played more minutes than he did during his career. Of course, Husky fans remember Bobby Jones and Will Conroy. You can give us your answers. Text us at 95323. Francis Williams, if you had a choice of those four, who would you pick? Will Conroy. Will Conroy would be my choice. I think Will, Will made himself into a pretty good basketball player. He really did. I mean, he came here as a, as to Washington as a walk-on. A lot of people don't remember that. But, uh, you know, all of those guys definitely made their mark in their respective programs during their time. But I really like what Will Conroy did as he left Washington as the all-time leader in assists. Last time I checked, I may be wrong, Will Conroy is still in the uh, developmental league? Yes, he was. Uh, still working out there as Quincy Pondexter. Hits that jumper. Last cut, uh, last got group of guys cut by the Houston Rockets this year. He's had a cup of coffee with a couple of NBA teams. Just been close, but just hasn't been able to stick. Con Dexter into double figures with 11, the third Husky to get to double figures, led by Thomas's 13 and Overton's 11. Josh Tarver picking up a pass not intended for him. Shoftenar missing the three ball. Dean keeps it alive. Last touched by a holiday and it'll be Oregon State ball. Well, they were battling. You got to give a holiday some credit because Dean has about three or four inches on him and about 40 pounds. But they were really going at it, going after that rebound. And fans agreeing with you, Francis, in terms of unsung hero, Will Conroy, leading the early voting. You can continue to text in at 95323. First shot clock for the Beavers. That's Tarver. Quincy Pondexter, two of the best in the Pac-10, matched up right there. And Quincy with the three fouls, and uh, you may see Oregon State go after him. Shaftenar going to work nicely done with a right hand over Matthew Bryan Amity. Shaftenar showing us the whole arsenal tonight. We've seen him knock down the three. We've seen him do some things on the post, make some nice passes, block a couple shots, doing a nice job for Oregon State. Netherlands out dueling England on that play. <laughs> Pondexter. Holiday. Off glass, it was strong. Dean has it taken away by Brian Amening. And you're absolutely right. It'll be, it'll be little plays like that that'll make the difference. Dean had the ball in his possession, and Brian Amening just came and took it from him. He's got it, and then here he comes. He's not quite able to get it into his body where he's got some strength, and he takes it from him. And those are the type of small plays that, that lead to, to wins and also lead to losses. Second foul line, Dean, first team foul this half against Oregon State. Huskies with a five point lead at 51 46 as we approach the 12 minute mark. Let this have. Oh, the beautiful alley oop over Tend to Pond Dexter for the front. Nice job of the set play coming out of the sideline out of bounds. Perfectly executed. Pond Dexter now with 13 as that equals a team high with Thomas. Shoftenar inside. The defense by. Ryan Amonick, Shoftenar gets it back. Last touch by Dean, it'll be Washington ball. 
A perfect execution by the Huskies over to Tapon Dexter and the UW lead now at seven. Now Francis arrived at Bank of America tonight. Nicely right. done. A little slower than a car, but you got here. That's the main I left, thing. I left early. <laughs> hey, we want to take you uh, quickly over to Spokane tonight. Spokane Arena. Gonzaga taking on Oklahoma. And take a look at that. Holy smokes. That backboard is history. This just happening in the game between the Zags and the Sooners. Look out below. I believe Casey Cavalry. Did that about uh, 10 years ago against New Mexico. They remember, I think it was the 90, I'm going to probably get this wrong, I think 95 Final Four, Big Country, Bryant Reeves yeah, at the Kingdom. Kingdom yes. I was standing right there. I was there too. And he pulled that backboard down. So I think it's safe to say there's a delay in Spokane right now as we resume play here at Bank of America Arena. The 17th rated Huskies up seven on Oregon State. Nice feed by Thomas. Brian Ammoning couldn't get the handle, and Oregon State has the ball. Brian Manning again, he's, he's got to make those shots. He has to corral that ball and take it up strong and complete the play. Terrific find by Thomas. Haynes going inside, off balance. Strong rebound by NBA. On Dexter into front court. And he was thinking highlight real material before he was fouled. And Quincy will head to the line to shoot a pair. Alan Amari Johnson is his third. The second team foul against Oregon State. Huskies with five team fouls. Well, Haynes had a clear drive. The body had a clear drive to the basket, and there was contact there, but there was no call. But the quick shot by Oregon State and the miss, that gives Washington the opportunity to get out in transition. Von Dexter, three of five at the line. Has 13 points and seven rebounds. He's also playing like Johnson with three personal fouls. One out of two on that trip. As he now has a game high, 14 points. Quincy will get a blow, replaced by Elston Turner. Turner checking in. He is yet to score in the game. Oregon State trying to going consistently on the offensive end. Seth Tarver out of the game right now. He's had some struggles. He scored two points in the last 29 minutes. Foul inside. They'll push by Isaiah Thomas. That's his third personal. Sixth team foul against the Huskies. Well, Shafton are facilitating the offense for Oregon State. Eye contact between he and Josh Tarver. Josh Tarver goes on the back cut. Catches Isaiah Thomas turning his head just a little bit and he gets called for the foul. And now another foul. This one against Overton. And that is the 17th the foul. Team. And they're shooting, so they'll be shooting for the rest of the half. And uh, Oregon State right now with only team, two team fouls. So when you're trying to make up an eight-point deficit, you take care of your business at the line. That certainly doesn't hurt the cause. They've done a better job of taking care of the basketball here in the second half, that being Oregon State, and they've done somewhat better with regards to keeping Washington off the offensive glass. Joe Burton returning. Shoftenar takes a seat. That was the first free throw of the game for Haynes. That's your rookie. I think maybe Lorenzo Romar claiming a lane violation. No. Well, well they thought it was one and one but they gave him two shots. Got it. Turner. He got that too. Elston Turner with his first basket tonight comes from beyond the arc. And it's a 10 point Husky lead. Burton. Holiday going for this trip. The draw is the foul. And Big Joe's going to head to the line. Well, in the first half, when there was a non call, it really sparked Washington. And Washington comes back after this one. And Turner knocks down the three, just as we saw Shaftonar make a three earlier. And that's a shot that Oregon State has desperately been needing Shaftonar to make. That shot that Turner just made for Washington. They've been waiting for him to break out because against zones and Washington will see a lot of zone. They're going to need him to shoot the ball well from the outside. Roy Overton checking out as Abdul Gaddy returns. He's the freshman out of Tacoma. Seth Tarver comes back in for Oregon State. He had those five points, quick points early, and uh, hasn't scored in the last 29 minutes of the game. That created a problem right there for Matthew Bryan Amining. 
Ball is off Brian Amening, and it will go to Oregon State. Lorenzo Romar, you can read his lips, yelling, box out. It's one of the few times I could read lips and then actually repeat it on the air. Yeah. This shot, the ball will go to the Huskies. You are leading by nine. So we approach the midway point here in the second half. Caddy out of the doubles team as the Huskies deal with this 1 3 1 Oregon State zone defense. Josh Tarver with a hold on Holiday. First foul on Josh Tarver, third team foul against the Beavers as the freshman Jared Cunningham will check into the game. And you see the attention that they're paying to Thomas. Look at the three Oregon State defenders, if we can stop it right there. Look at the three Oregon State defenders giving Thomas attention, trying to keep him out of the lane. So if you're Thomas and you see that, move the ball. Nice job by. Isaiah saw Cunningham coming toward him, knew the contact was coming, and he'll get a couple of free throws. Second foul on Cunningham, fourth team foul. Isaiah Thomas making his first trip to the line tonight. He shoots 78% on the season. Huskies as a team shoot 72%. That's third best in the Pac-10. And the lead back to 10 at 58-48. The top scoring team in the conference at 83 and a half points per game. Again, those are all non conference numbers. We'll see how things shape out as the teams begin to play each other now in conference play on this opening day of the Pac 10 season. Cunningham with a penetration to Haynes. That's a back from Amari Johnson and Travis. 13th turnover against the Beavers. Coming in, they were averaging 16.7. Coach Romar told Jen at the half that the Huskies needed to do a better job of staying true to their defensive assignments. And that time, the cuts were there, but the defensive rotation was better for Washington. Turner strong on that three ball. Here comes Amari Johnson. And the goaltending against Matthew Bryan Amini. And Oregon State gets out in transition as Johnson does a good job of running hard in the backcourt and filling the lane. And uh, that time Washington did not do a good job of getting back defensively. And with that, Quincy Pond Dexter quickly to the scorer's table as he'll be returning. Holiday inside. Short arms that baseline shot. And the ball will go to Oregon State. On Dexter in as Holiday checks out. Holiday's had a couple of good looks down there along the baseline, and one he uh, overshot the basket pretty bad, and then that one there he short arms that one, and uh, he knocks it out of bounds. So possession back to Oregon State. The illegal pick on Joe Burton. Third foul on Burton. Fifteen foul. So that significant advantage. Oregon State had in terms of fouls is becoming marginalized a bit with five team fouls now on the Beavers. Inside Thomas with the find. On Dexter, Quincy penetrates, fades. Matthew Brian Amening came down with a rebound and then was fouled by Jared Cunningham. I'm sure Jared Cunningham feels that Brian Amening came over his back, but he's Seven, eight, seven inches taller than him, so he just reached over him and got the rebound. And then when he reached up to try to see if he could get in the play there, he, he fouled him. 16 fouls on the Beavers, so the Huskies on the verge of getting into the bonus. Thomas for three. Nearly got the bounce. Pondexter keeps it alive. All last touch by Seth Tarver. The Huskies will maintain possession. Shoftenar returning as Burton heads to the Oregon State bench. Josh Tarver returning as well for the Beavers and Calvin Haynes will check out. And he's leaving with seven points. And at this eight minute mark, eight and a half minute mark, you can see that the, the Washington depth, I think, is starting to kind of take its toll 
on Oregon State, and you can see them starting to wear down a little bit as they did a pretty good job at the start of the half of keeping Washington off the glass, but now they're kind of beating them down, and uh, it's getting a little, little tougher for them inside. Great fake at the other end by Thomas to get Johnson off his feet, and then Shaftenar with the answer. Shaftenar so versatile. Good on the post, good on the perimeter. Oregon State last season with seven conference wins, a year removed from going winless in the Pac-10, but they did have issues with the Huskies a year ago, Washington winning both games by an average of 22 and a half points. Yeah, both, both games last year, particularly the game in, in uh, Corvallis, uh, that was a game where it didn't seem that Oregon State really competed very hard in that particular game here. In the game in Seattle, there was a big spurt by Washington, and as closely as Oregon State had played them just that fast, the game was over. That foul on Cunningham, his fourth. That put the Huskies in the bonus. Pondexter now with 15 points. Huskies led by the 16 of Isaiah Thomas. Noy Overton, the only other Husky in double figures, he has 11. And Pondexter now shares the scoring lead for his team. In fact, and in the game with 16 points, he and Thomas. Husky lead at 10, 62 52. 750 left in the second half. Shotdenar gets it back. Very strong. Cunningham inside. Traveled as he lost balance. 745 left in this second half. The Huskies with a double digit lead over the Bees. These guys, you know, this, in terms of his, it's worth bringing him up now, Roberto Nelson. Oh, yeah, we bring him up. I mean, just to mention, yeah, he's mm -hmm. these. Yep. What's that, Kurt? Detlef is usually here. I don't know that he's here or where he if he has a normal place yeah. he sits. He usually sits right behind that basket there. I don't see over him. there. Yeah. What's Justin doing? He's in Israel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 17th rated Huskies with a 10 point lead over the Oregon State Beavers 62 to 52. Great to have you with us on. New Year's Eve from Bank of America Arena with 745 left to play here in the second half. Another strong game by Quincy Pondexter. 16 points and eight rebounds for the senior out of Fresno. So we take a look at our U.S. Marines leaders of the game and well, he certainly fits that description. It's a little quiet early but uh, has definitely just been patient. Did a good job tonight of kind of letting the game come to him and his activity always leads to results as uh, he's uh, scores the ball in a lot of different ways and moving up that career scoring ladder last game passed uh, his assistant coach Paul Fortier closing in now on former teammate Justin Detman and Detlef Shrimp and you were telling me Justin's playing ball over in Israel right yes, now correct Good for him Turner missing shot with the rebound for Oregon State well, Turner made that last three would have been a a big boost for Washington for him to knock down that one and get the lead to 13. Justin Denman, by the way, last season against the Beavs hit seven three pointers and scored 28 in the last meeting between these clubs. That was February 12th. Amari Johnson inside spun into some help defense, but before that, a foul going against the Huskies. Now on Pondexter, that is his fourth. Ninth team foul against the Huskies, so Pondexter will need to be careful if he remains in the game right now. 
We have Gant and Overton getting ready to check in for the Huskies. Seth Tarver getting ready to check in for Oregon State. Pondexter and Gaddy head to the Husky bench and Daniel Dean to the Beaver bench. Mari Johnson. 70% free throw shooter. It's one out of two. And this might be, this is probably Oregon State's best lineup that they can put on the floor. As we said earlier, Johnson gives them a different element on this, on the wing over here defensively at six foot seven. Turner with the penetration to Thomas being harassed by Seth Tarver. And then Haynes deflecting the ball into the stands. 19 seconds on the shot clock for the Huskies. Calvin Haynes out of Reseda, California, 6'3", junior. Now on Seth Tarver and Isaiah Thomas will head to the line. And Isaiah Thomas, he, he sold that one to the referee. There, there was some contact and he, you know, gave the indication that, hey, he's holding me and the ref, the ref, the ref bought it. One and one for Thomas. That is the eighth team foul against Oregon State. First foul on Seth Tarver. And rebound by Johnson. Want to take advantage of those trips to the line. Oregon State still very much in this game. Skip pass over to Johnson looking for a three. Gets it. And he falls into the Oregon State bench just like that. The Beavs are down by just six. Johnson's been a spark. Uh, in both halves for Oregon State. Ten points off the bench on four of five shooting for Omari Johnson. Nice move inside by Brian Avening. Couldn't finish though. Inside Gant can finish. Darnell Gant with four points. And that's a nice play by Darnell Gant. That's what he did for Washington last year, and it's been lacking a little bit, and that's why uh, for a part of this preseason he lost his starting spot because he wasn't rebounding the basketball. Haynes guarded by Thomas. Nice floater that time by Calvin Haynes. That's a tough shot. That is a tough one. Going to your right as a left-handed player. Haynes now with nine points. Thomas gets it back from Overton. Gantz is firing. And the rebound by Haynes. And the Beavers are down by six. Three ball here would make it a one-possession game. Shoftenar guarded by Gantz. Johnson looking for another three. In and out. Had a good look at it that time. Had a good look. Overton into front court. And the foul will go against Josh Tarver. And I believe the official called that basket good. That was NBA continuation. <laughs> We, we need to take another. You can look at the reaction. Okay, here's the bump foul. Takes a step, then goes into the shot. And they count it. And the three-point play for Isaiah Thomas. Craig Robinson surprised as anybody. Yeah, that's a tough call there for the Beavers. Lead back to nine. Shoftenar, he goes for three. Rebound by Thomas. Isaiah on the push. Lost it. Johnson ahead to Josh Tarver. He'll get the easy two. No, he misses. Gets it back. Inside a foul. Can you believe that? Josh Tarver had a chippy, blew the lay-in, then commits the foul. And here was Oregon State one possession ago looking at Cutting a Husky lead to four or three points, and instead they're down nine. Yeah, well, Tarver, you know, just got, just never got his balance when he went up for that shot and didn't get the, didn't get the friendly roll. Over to oh. Well, he saw the Red Sea <laughs> part and took advantage of it, and the Husky lead up to 11 now. Yeah, we have the perfect vantage point for that play, though. As you said, it just parted, and there was seen there for him unimpeded to the basket. Seth Tarver. That basket went a foul away from the shot. Let's see if they count the shot. Okay, let's see if they uh, 
As you see Overton, he has a complete seam there. No help defense at all by Oregon State, and he goes in for the uncontested layup. But now let's see if this basket counts. There's the pass to Tarver. The shot goes up, and then there's a foul call. Sixty nine sixty one so the basket counted counted it was a three. and Shoftenar heads to the line to shoot one and one mm -hmm. check it double bonus now so two free throws guaranteed for Rulin Shoftenar so both teams now in the double bonus a little karma <laughs> some crazy stuff going on right now. Shaftanar now with 13 points. So we take one final look at the unsung hero voting on our fan polls question. Will Conroy is the man in that category. Shaftanar again at the line. And Thomas with the rebound with the Huskies up by seven. Hesitation by Thomas. Oregon State looks like they've gone out of a 1-3-1, one, one, maybe to a 2-3 defense, zone defense. Overton for three. In and out, Shoftenar with the rebound. Inside of four minutes. And Oregon State very much alive against the nation's 17th rated team. Haynes, no good rebound. Brian Ameny. Oregon State has had some good looks at threes, but Johnson, Shoftenar, and Haynes all missing. Thomas with a runner. Shoftenar with a rebound. Foul by Matthew Bryan Amening. And Renzo Romar not happy with Brian Amening. Third foul on Matthew Bryan Amening. 322. Left at Bank of America Arena. And the Huskies clinging to a seven point lead. 322 left in the second half. The 17th rated Huskies in front of the Beavers, 69 to 62 at Bank of America Arena. ACC Sunday Night Hoops continues this week with Florida in action against North Carolina State. Plus, Wake Forest hosts Xavier and the seventh rated Duke Blue Devils take on number 21 Clemson. Triple header coverage gets underway Sunday at noon on FSN and FSN HD. Here's a good look for New Year's Eve. For that guy, anyway. <laughs> Rulin Shoftenar heading to the line for the Oregon State Beavers. Rulin Shoftenar to the line for two shots. Shoot two free throws with both teams in the double bonus. And again, this in the wake of the made three point shot. And then Shoftenar away from the ball foul. So, so far, a four point play with the potential for a fifth point on this one possession for the Beavers. Shoftenar leading Oregon State in scoring with 15 points to go along with six rebounds. And the reason Oregon State's been able to, to not lose contact here with this five point difference is that they've done a much better job in the second half of taking care of the basketball as they had 12 turnovers at the half. And at this point in the second half, with three minutes left, they've only turned it over four times. Shoftenar getting 10 of his 16 points in this second half. Elston Turner inside. Pondexter losing the ball. Last touch by Seth Tarver with 15 seconds on the shot clock. Very interesting. I always find it when you're in these late game situations, you've got a game up for grabs, the decision making by the players. Yep, it just comes back to, uh, you know, having poise and, and being confident and uh, un understanding what you can and what you can't do. Thomas hanging, rebound, Shoftenar, the outlet to Calvin Haynes. He goes up strong and misses, contested by Overton. And Amari Johnson committing the foul on Elston Turner. So a golden opportunity for the Beavers. Nice outlet by Shoftenar, but Haynes could not finish. And that's just the peskiness of of Vinoy Overton, but Calvin Haynes has got to know that he can't block his shot without fouling him. I mean, he's just as athletic as Overton is, and he's got to take that ball in with confidence and lay it up off the glass. And if he does get fouled, absorb that contact and either get a chance for the, for the three-point play or at least make the layup. 
Elston Turner has had his challenges at the line this season coming into the game hitting on just five of 14. That one makes it a two possession game. Huskies up by six. And now a three possession game. So two big free throws by Elston Turner who checks out and Justin Holiday now into the Husky lineup. And the Beavers need a response. The Huskies. And the Quintain Haynes shot to Nar. Passing up the three. Haynes will not. And Haynes can hit it and does. Calvin Haynes looking for some redemption after the missed lay in. Gets the three ball, and the Beavers are down by just four. Well, Washington decides that they want to go zone and uh, see if they can just keep Oregon State in front of them, not let them get into their, their offense here. And you see they swing the ball to the front to Schaffner, shot fake, they forget about Haynes, and he's got a clear look, and he gets one to go. They went Schaffner and Haynes do a terrific job with a two-man game. They do. Out on that point. Let's take a look at our Oberto Beef Jerky Alpha Player of the Game. How about Benoit Overton? He's done a little bit of everything tonight. Yeah, he really has. Well, he came in and, and as he always does, affected the game with his defense. But we've talked about it the last three or four games. His offense has really been coming around. He shot the ball well from three. He's always on the attack when he has the ball in the open floor. And he's even made some shots on the half court, as we see there when there was no defensive rotation by Oregon State, and they gave him a clear lane to the basket. Have Overton with four steals, 13 points, three rebounds, and four assists. Pretty impressive stat line. But the Huskies just thinking about getting the W. Han Dexter, too strong, loose ball, and they'll get a new shot clock. And that's Big been, offensive rebound for the Huskies. And, and that's exactly what I was going to say. There's an opportunity for Oregon State, but they can't come up with the rebound. Huskies with a four-point lead. Holiday. And that was deflected by, I believe, Shoftenar. So Holiday not playing with a lot of confidence offensively. Turns down a, a good a good shot. Pondexter maybe not quite expecting it. Then uh, Washington though gets lucky as it goes out, out of bounds off of a beer. Two minutes left here in the second half. Overtime a possibility. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Ball deflected and stolen by Johnson for the Beavers. Johnson with that leap on the wing. 15th turnover against the Huskies. Backdoor cut defended well by Holiday as Seth Tarver tried to get to the hoop. Haynes a little hesitation draws contact the block on Isaiah Thomas his yep. former teammate and Haynes will head to the line to shoot two. Well definitely a good call you see Oregon State they go two man game with Shafton R and Haynes out top. Haynes finds a gap, goes to the basket, goes strong, and there's definitely contact between he and Thomas, and it's a block, and now Haynes has a chance for two. Beavers trail by four with a minute 27. Fourth foul on Isaiah Thomas. Haynes cuts the lead to three. Three earlier games played on the opening day of the Pac-10 Conference. All were close, so why not this one? Absolutely. Calvin Haynes, two for three at the line with 13 points. That one is short, rebounded by Pondexter. Not even close on that free throw by Haynes. Overton trying to split that Oregon State defense and turning it over, and Haynes comes up with it. And Oregon State with a chance to tie down by three. 110 left in the second half. Oregon State leads the Pac-10 in steals. Traveling against Hayes and looking on in disbelief is Craig Robinson. Critical turnover with the Beavers on a 9 2 run over the last three minutes and eight seconds. Wow. Again, decision making. Yeah, well, you called it. I mean, it's a pressure situation. They Oregon State does a great job of not letting Overton split them on the dribble and they come up with the loose ball and get the steal. Then they go down on the offensive end and we've seen Haynes knock down a big three and then get to the line. But he missed that layup earlier that uh, was at a pivotal point in the game and now he turns it over here with the travel. And came up short on the free throw. So a rough stretch 
with the exception of that three ball for Calvin Haynes, the junior out of Reseda, California. Beavers will come out onto the floor with Shaftanar, Haynes, the Tarver brothers, and Amari Johnson. The Huskies countering with Matthew Bryan Amini, Quincy Pine, Dexter, Elston Turner, Vinoy Overton, and Isaiah Thomas with 106 left in the second half. So they, Oregon State goes back to their 1-3-1. They, they have Washington has to watch for the half court trap here. Seth Tarver at the front part of that zone. Oh, creates. Haynes nearly coming up with a steal. He's not doing a good job against that Oregon State defense. And they have not, and Tarver, Tarver has not thinking about it out, out top here. They went 2-3 for a while. Now they go back to their 1-3-1, one, one, which is their bread and butter. And uh, the, the Huskies have not been confident against this particular defense all night. Shot clock at four. Tarver. Dexter turns it over. Johnson, Seth Tarver, one on two. Tarver goes up, no good. Rebound by Dexter. Another missed opportunity for Oregon State with 25.7 seconds left. The Beavers have had opportunity after opportunity and just have not been able to cash in when they desperately need to. Well, up against the shot clock, Quincy Pondexter tries to make a play. Amari Johnson, who's played a great game for the Beavers here, tips it away, and you see Tarbury knew he had Thomas on him, thought he could just go and shoot over him, but just came up a little bit short. Quincy Pondexter, 17 points and 10 rebounds, another double-double. Take a nine free throws tonight and hit seven. Turner out, Holiday in for the Huskies. Ron Dexter gets both. That first made free throw turned it into a two possession game and remains that way with the Huskies leading 73 to 68. So obviously, if you're Oregon State, it really doesn't matter right now. I wouldn't think whether you go for a three or a two. You just got to get a shot off quickly, and you need to try to stretch this game out as long as you can. First good available shot. Go ahead and take it. Try to knock it down. Get into your defense. See if you can create a turnover. If not, foul and just prolong the game. Pac-10 play kicks into high gear this Saturday as Washington takes on Northwest rival Oregon. That's followed by Oregon State in action against Washington State and the Red Hawks of Seattle University will square off with Harvard. Coverage tips off at 2 p.m. on FSN and FSN HD. Where are you going to be? I will be here. Okay. And you're going to be with? I'm going to be with Brad at uh, Seattle University Harvard. Picking out Charles Garcia and the rest of the Red Hawks. Yes, sir. Harvard's in town. Hainsel hesitation goes in and gets that lay in. And Oregon State down by three. What it was a little contact on that play as Haynes went to the basket, but 73-70 uh, here, 19.2 seconds left. You see Haynes just looking for a seam, and he finds it. And there was contact there by Holiday, but there was no call. But three-point game with just a little under 20 seconds to go. Oregon State going to set up their defense. I'm sure there's, there's still a lot of time, so they can set up their defense and see if they can get a trap or create some type of turnover. And then if they can't, then look to, to foul. Huskies 18 of 24 at the free throw line. Oregon State tonight 13 of 20. Looking at the Huskies on the court. Vinoy Overton on the season. Shoots 70%. Isaiah Thomas 78%. Elston Turner probably the weakest free throw shooter on the court. Maybe a big reason why he's inbounding the ball. Pondexter strong and Darnell Gann a good free throw shooter as well. 9 of 11 this season. So for Oregon State, a bit of uh, pick your poison in terms of the foul if you have to get it. Oh, and Haynes Almost. nearly came up with a steal. And they and had they even, if Washington had gotten the ball in bounds, they were going to be in a position for a good solid trap right there in that corner. And clearly not happy with the lack of execution on that inbound play. Lorenzo Romar will take a timeout and try to get his guys to execute better the second time around. And trying to force him to the corner. You see Thomas asking for the ball. Haynes steps in and gets a hand in that in that passing lane. But just like the entire night for Oregon State, just a little bit short on being able to see if he can save it from going out of bounds. A little tough on that angle. It almost looked like Thomas had actually touched the ball, but 
the way Haynes reacted in terms of going after mm -hmm. it obviously he felt like he was the last player right to touch it as you get a look at Greg Robinson in his second season with Oregon State 24 and 23 his overall record 17.3 seconds left here in the second half so now Turner cannot move because the ball went out of bounds there so he cannot run the baseline he has to stay right there. It into Gantz. No foul. Finally, the call against Johnson. Four seconds off the clock. Amari Johnson with the foul. And big free throws coming up for Quincy Pond Dexter. His fifth personal foul. Team free throws since the five minute mark in this game. Oregon State three for four. The Huskies five for five. Quincy Pond Dexter just hit a couple at the line not too long ago. Well your senior leader that's who you would want at the line he's been great at the line all season long at uh, 84 percent. He's been great tonight from the line for Washington as he's uh, eight for ten. So that's the guy right now you would want at the line. Mari Johnson fouling out by the way ten points and five rebounds as you look at what's coming up for the Huskies on FSM of course they'll be hosting the Ducks at two o'clock on Saturday and then off on the road to play the Arizona schools first stop in Tempe then on to Tucson and then back home to take on the Bay Area schools in a much anticipated matchup with Cal the media choice before the season to win the Pac-10 conference but again at this time as Pondexter hits that huge free throw the Huskies are the only team in the Pac-10 that is nationally ranked at 17 where they're getting healthy they got Theo Robertson back and uh, he's a big part of what they do Harper camp unfortunately they lost him for the season but uh, they're going to be formidable. Beavers need to get a quick shot off. Lathan Wallace needs to kick it into gear. Fades for the three. No good. Rebound by Gantz. Darnell fouled, and that'll do it for the Washington Huskies. Leading 75 to 70 with 4.6 seconds left to play. So, I think from an Oregon State perspective, the Beavers are going to look at themselves and all the missed opportunities they had late in this game as you see what they have coming up four o'clock start time in Pullman on Saturday against a Cougar team that was shot tonight by an officials decision in overtime as they fell to the Ducks in double OT as Gant hits that free throw non conference game against Seattle University on the sixth. Well two schools that don't want to start the Pac-10 season 0 and 2 so that'll be a a big matchup between Oregon State and Washington State on Saturday. Darnell again. Missing. He'll finish with five points as Seth Tarver takes the three to end the game. And the defending Pac-10 Conference champion Washington Huskies end the year and end the decade with a 76 to 70 win over the Oregon State Beavers. Both programs coming into this game with 1600 victories all time and Washington will leave the building with 1600 and one you get a good look at Isaiah Thomas who had a very nice game tonight with 19 points and five rebounds the Huskies led by the 20 points and 10 rebounds from Quincy Pondexter who was outstanding at the free throw line where he hit 10 of 12 and Oi Overton for the fourth straight game he came off the bench to score in double figures with 13 tonight. 